Hi everyone, it's great to be back for another deconstruction and for this one we're going to be looking at all-time classic track by Bronski Beat, Small Town Boy. There we go, got the 12 inch there. Let's just have a look at some of the facts of this track. So written by Bronski Beat and Bronski Beat is Jimmy Somerville, Steve Bronski and Larry Steinbecheck. Produced by Mike Thorne, legendary producer. Vocals by Jimmy, obviously those really distinctive kind of falsetto vocals that he was so well known for. Keyboards and programming by Steve and Larry. Released back in 1984, and it, was, uh, it came out on a label called Forbidden Fruit, which was a UK sub-label of London Records. And it's from this album, their debut album, The Age of Consent. Fantastic album, really good tracks. There's a really great cover of I Feel Love on there. It did really well, got to number three in the UK and was a number one US dance hit and has been covered and sampled by more than about 30, 30 artists, I think. So very, very successful. Style-wise, it's kind of synth pop, disco, super catchy. And I think, yeah, probably one of the, you know, most, well, the biggest production features is that kind of DX7 melody line. Really, really catchy, which we're going to be looking at um, in a bit. So just as far as some of the instruments that we use on the track, the drums uh, are very distinctive. They use the Lin drum, LM2, came out uh, 1982 to 1985. It's a sample based drum machine, just used on so many tracks uh, of that era. Keyboard wise, so I've mentioned the Yamaha DX7. I actually was trying to do a bit of research on this and found this super rare clip on YouTube. Well, it's not rare anymore because on YouTube. And it's them playing on stage in a small German town of Hoekster, I think is that, that's how you pronounce it. I was looking for the bass sound, what, what, you know, trying to get some clues of what that might be. And I saw that Larry's actually playing a Korg Trident. Um, I'll just show that to you there. So yeah, we're, it's, it's kind of really lovely, warm kind of analog synth that came out in 1980s, 1982. And then also the, the legendary DX7 as well. So there's some of the synths. Let's look at actually deconstructing it. So for this, as ever, using my favorite Push 2 together with Ableton Live software, we're gonna be using that to uh, program in all the sounds. So yeah, let's get going. Let's start off with the drums. So these, these are the sounds here. So I'm actually, for this, I'm actually using a Native Instruments battery Lin drum kit. I'm actually playing it with a drum rack. So maybe that's another video sometime about actually how to set that up. What that's uh, allowed me to do is actually put some processing on some of the drums. So this snare, for example, um, I'm actually using the UAD Lexicon 224 to give it that really kind of big reverb sound. If I just mute that, you can see what that sounds like and then put it back. There we go. And then all the other effects are actually coming from uh, within battery. So let's uh, program in the drum pattern. So let's just put the metronome on. We've got record quantize on. So let's go for it. So pretty simple four bar loop, let's put the uh, hi-hat in, just on eight. Cool, and then there's one more sound, this kind of offbeat uh, tambourine. So that really is the kind of core beat of the, of the track. Um, there are some variations, which we'll look at in a minute. I'm just gonna show you one of those. If I just copy that clip up to the first scene, which is the intro, um, and if I just double that loop to make it eight bars, and then just go to the last two bars, we're just gonna put in just a little kind of drum riff. There we go. Let's just put that back to eight bars. Cool, so rather than go through every single pattern, which is gonna take a long time, I've actually pre-prepared the patterns 
So I'm just going to drag those over there and we can have a listen to uh, some of those. So we've got the ones that we've just programmed in. Um, so this is the kind of intro section. Then we get to the verse and you can see it really kind of spaces out. The snare comes out, still got that hi-hat. And then gradually, as we go through the verse, the beat gradually builds up until the point when we get to the chorus and it all kind of comes back in again. Um, there's a middle, middle eight section as well, which we'll be looking at, but basically they're all the drum patterns. Let's look at the bass line. So um, I mentioned before that possibly it was a chord trident. I'm not sure exactly uh, if it was or not. But what's interesting is I actually chose another chord synth before I did that research, just because I stumbled across a sound or I knew, a, I knew there was a preset I really liked and I wanted to sort of see if that was going to work. So the sound that I actually chose was this Korg Poly 6. Let's just turn the arpeggiator off. There you go. So that's the sound I use. And I actually created a chain here where I layered two together. So we have that one there, and then I put one an octave up, put them together, and that just kind of really gives it some fatness. Before I put that in, let's just have a look at a little bit of the music theory of this track. So I'm actually going to go on to a different sound just to uh, demonstrate what's going on here. So as ever with these deconstructions, I always try to look for the key signature because this is going to dictate the notes that are being played in the track from the scale and also the chords as well. So this is in C minor. So let's just play the notes of C minor. We've got C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat and C. And the chords start off, the first one is C minor, which is the one chord. So this is just a C minor triad. Then it goes to the seven chord, which is the B flat major. Then to the four chord, which is an F minor. And the brackets two means it's the second inversion. So if we just play the root position, the triad of F minor, it's that. First inversion, second inversion. And then we have the three chord, which is E flat major. And again, that's the second inversion as well. And in the middle section, there aren't actually any chords, but the bass is slightly different. It goes C, E flat, F, and an A flat. So we're going to shoot back to the bass now. And you might have seen earlier, I turned the arpeggiator off. So what it's actually playing here is um, an octave bass line. This is a classic kind of disco bass line. And I can actually use Ableton's arpeggiator here. And I could just hold down the note and I can do it. But I think for, for now, we'll actually play that in. So let's record it in. And you notice that I did a little passing note on the D, just going down from the E flat to the D. So there we go. We're, we're really getting, now, getting there now. Right, so this bass line pretty much goes through uh, the whole track apart from the middle eight. So I'm going to duplicate it down. There we go. Just bear with me. Uh, and there. And just for the middle eight, it's a slight variation, as I showed you with the chords, where we actually go up an octave. So let's record that in. that hand clap riff there. Cool, so let's just duplicate that down and then let's shoot back up to the top. So right, here we go. This really is uh, the big part and it's the melody and it's the DX7 melody. So let me just show you uh, what I've got here. So uh, you might have seen a video I did before on this is the Arturia DX7 and let's just listen to it. So this is one of the presets. It came in the kind of the first bank, I think, when you first turn on the DX7, you have this sound. But I've actually put some effects on it. So let's have a look at those. Um, if I just take them all off now. Uh, so first of all, I thought, well, I've got a UAD here. Let's put it through an SSL e-channel strip. Um, I'm just using uh, compression on this. Uh, it sounds really nice, so let's just take it off. 
something about it kind of gives it that warm and warmth and uh, and punch so i've got that um, and then i'm actually using this uh, sound toys little micro shift i love this it's a kind of chorus chorusy effect doubler and then finally i'm using an ableton echo and i've got a really kind of uh, tight delay on this so there we go there are the sounds let's put it in let's just put the keyboard back now so this is starting off uh, on here the tonic the c now up to e flat d f so let's record it in Cool. So that doesn't change. Whenever that occurs, that's exactly the same riff. So let's just duplicate it down to those parts. Right, so in this intro, it starts off with the beat, bass line, then the melody comes in, and then this lovely pad comes in with these chords that I showed you before, which I will bring up. There we go. So C minor, E flat, F minor, E flat. Let's record it in. I mean, for me, there's almost like a kind of deep house vibe there. I, re I really love those chords. So, so melancholy. Right, so let's uh, duplicate that down to the different scenes. And there are some slight additions to these chords. So for the chorus section here, we just have this high note that comes in just at the start of that four bar loop. And then also the end of the second verse. We just have a high pedal note that comes in. So let's record that in. So you can hear all the parts being built up. They are the main musical parts. Well, there are a few more actually. Before we put those in, um, I just want to go to the middle eight because that's when it really kind of gets rocking. Um, and some percussion comes in. Uh, if I just look on the back of this, um, there was actually a conga player, John Fallerin. So John, if you're out there, respect. You gave it a lot of groove. Unfortunately, I couldn't bring him in. And so we've got next best, best thing, which uh, is the Roland TR-727. You might recognize that. Very well used uh, in the 80s. So um, this pattern goes like this. Let's record it in. Missed one there. So I'm just going to copy that over. Uh. Great, so let's duplicate that down for the whole of middle, middle eight section. Um, then we've got this other distinctive sound here, which is a marimba sound. And let me just show you what that is. Um, that's actually one of the Ableton factory sounds. It's uh, marimba rubber hits. I can actually play that on push as well. I've got scale mode on here. This is in uh, C minor. So let's record that in. There we go. One bar loop. Love it. Great. So. Now there's one other part um, which I'm not actually going to program in because it's uh, it's kind of something that's much more sort of improvised. Actually, the the, the start of the track starts off um, with this sound. Certainly, the the 12 inch version. Um, again, it's a DX7. This time I'm not using the Archeria. I'm actually using this free plugin which I absolutely love. Dext. Dx. Dx. I don't know how you pronounce it. 
So that again, that's one of the stock uh, DX7 sounds. Um, but there's this riff that comes in, which is and actually kind of it's used with uh, some modulation uh, and some pitch bend. So let's just play that in, or just hear what it sounds like. Hey, let's record it in, why not? Oh, made it. Uh, didn't think I could do that. That's probably why I didn't do it. But uh, anyway, I'll mute that for the moment. But uh, I think there's some, um, definitely there's some feel there, which maybe is not working very well with the quantize. So let's just mute that for the moment. So as ever with these deconstructions, it's great to hear the track with an acapella. Couldn't get Jimmy in, uh, unfortunately. But um, what I've been looking into and investigating and really enjoying is this website called Acapella Extractor. Um, and let me just show you what that looks like. There we go. So this is the website, check it out, acapellaextractor.com. And it says make acapellas from any song. And what's amazing about this is that you can literally just drag the full mix of the track onto this. Uh, it will work away in the background and then allow you to download an MP3 or WAV of the acapella. It's amazing. It uses this uh, open source library called Splitter, um, which is downloadable there from GitHub if you want to uh, check that out. But this is what I used for this. So if we just go back and have a listen, I'm just going to drag on the acapella here. There we go. And it's not perfect. There are some sort of artifacts, but it's definitely usable for these purposes. So let's just have a listen to this. Listen to the chorus. So you'll hear in a minute what that sounds like when it's mixed in with the track. But for me, this is super exciting because you know, it's a really great way to try out remixes. And I think with remixes, it's really good to be proactive, not always be asked to do a remix. If it's, if it's a track you like and you just want to try out a remix, then this is a way for you to do that. And you could send it to the artist, send it to the label, and you never know, it might get used. So uh, I thoroughly recommend it. So let's have a listen to the track all the way through. We're going to start off uh, right from start, just with the, with the intro uh, and see how far we get. And you never know, maybe I'll try playing in that uh, brass sound live. Here we go. So let's go from the start. Okay, back to the chorus.
Here we go, middle eight. There we go, even added a bit of brass at the end. So thank you very much for checking this out. Um, it's been great to be back. I'll be back with some more deconstructions very soon. Um, so yeah, thank you very much.